thousands of engineers, software engineers, developers are training to use this new technology. The internet itself is changing very rapidly. Now we have autonomous agents that are using money on the internet, and these are, in many cases, beyond the controls of any jurisdiction. What are the large corporations going to do with this new, magical, open, decentralized, neutral, borderless, censorship-resistant network? They're going to say, great, we'd like that, but could you take out the open, decentralized, borderless, neutral, censorship-resistant properties and package it with an SLA, a 12-month license, and control? Control for us. They will take the internet, and they will make intranets. They will make closed gardens of boring, stale content that is fundamentally insecure, that sits in the backyards of corporations, adding a tiny bit of value, but outside of the participation of the global community, insulated from the wave of innovation that is happening all around us. They will create these intranets. They will claim victory. They will turn around and they will say, we invented blockchain. And they will be wrong, and they will fail. Because the real principle, the real exciting thing about this technology, it's not the blockchain, which is a database artifact that is created out of this protocol. It is the ability to achieve distributed consensus among parties that don't trust each other across great, uh, across great distances without any central party, without any authority, without any intermediary. And that consensus from the outside looks chaotic, it looks messy, it looks weird. Well, everyone in this room already knows something that is open, flat, weird, and is not understood by corporations. The internet! We already did it once, we're going to do it again. And this time, we're going to bring the entire world with us. In the background of this grand story, there is another story that is playing out. After 25 years of the internet, it still takes three to five days to send money from here to a country that is not in Europe. It will still cost you 30, 40 US dollars to send money. And that is only if the country you are sending it to isn't a poor country, in which case it will cost far more and take far longer. A giant network of centralized, closed, corrupt systems that are sucking money out of the poorest people on this planet. In 2017, two and a half billion people do not have access to banking. That means they have zero access to banking, cash-based only, and that's only counting heads of household. Not their spouses, not their children. Clearly, they don't matter. That's according to the International Monetary uh, bank. Now, imagine what happens if you bring banking to an app, to a $20 Android, to everyone who has a smartphone. Three and a half to four billion people are on the internet today. Just over one billion people of those have banking, have full access to financial services. We're going to bring it to the other six billion fast. And this is going to change the world faster than the spread of cell phones. Imagine a $20 Android landing in a village in Kenya, and it's no longer just a communications device. It's a bank. Not a bank account, a bank. It can wire and receive funds from anywhere in the world. It can do lending or receive lending for a mortgage, to buy seeds for a field, to bring disaster relief. It can internationally connect every person on this planet, and we can do this within the next ten years. The world will radically transform when you bring the capability of a broad economic inclusion to everyone in this world. Now, you would think that banks want to do this. You'd be wrong. It's not really profitable serving people who have little money, little connectivity, no access to ID in oppressed countries with terrible governments. Also, in most of those countries, the banks are criminals. They are criminal organizations, or really quite indistinguishable from the local mob. So how do we fix that? 
Up to now, the approach for all of these technologies, whether it was PayPal or any of the other technologies we've seen emerge in financial technology very, very slowly, was to carefully and politely ask for permission. Bitcoin is not asking for permission. We forgot to do that. And so we will proceed in banking the entire world without asking for anyone's permission. This protocol is now spreading, and if this one gets shut down, a 14-year-old with a copy of my book can rebuild it in a weekend in any programming language and launch it again with its new name, and again, and again, and again, until we succeed. The world is now connected. Finance is now an application, and money is a content type. Welcome to our new planet. Thank you.